Okay, what we're going to do is we need to get this fire going first. So, I've got some charcoal in there. A fire lighter in there somewhere. Where is it? Ashes. That's it. So we've actually closed the door. Smoke might actually go up the chimney then. There we go. Should see some flames in a minute. Yeah, you can see them just starting to come up now, look. I'll bring you back when it's going and then I'll show you what we're gonna cook. Okay, so fire's on. It's not ready to cook yet because it's um, there's still a lot of coals that aren't burnt ready to go. So let me just show you a close up of that. Hopefully you can see that. And that's really starting to kick out some heat now. Um, this is what we're cooking today. Let me show you this. Let's get my legs out of the way. Do you want to see my legs? Um, where are we? There we are. So that's it. So this is what we're cooking. Uh, probably that way okay so we've got a top side of beef um, and it's marinated it's got some lovely um, spices salt and pepper and um, yeah it's 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 just ready really to, to cook I've put a rub on it as well which is just really it's it's, it's kind of like a steak rub but it's one that, that I use I make it up and I use a little bit of um, uh, beef um, stock as well because that just gives it a lovely deeper flavor and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that on a spit roast in a minute and then we'll get it on the fire move the coals over so it's not cooking on a direct heat and then um, we'll we'll start to cook it, turn it on, and it takes about about an hour and about an hour and ten minutes, I suppose, to cook a joint like that. Um, it's a lovely joint, and it's and it'll be really tender. We take it off and leave it for about half an hour, forty minutes to rest. That allows all the moisture to get back into the actual joint itself. Uh, I try to cut the strings if I can, because as it sort of shrinks um, with the heat and it starts to. As, it, as you take it off and it starts to cool down it obviously it starts to expand a little bit so you don't want the string restricting the actual um, uh, uh, the actual um, receiving the moisture back into the actual joint if you know what I mean that's going to be quite tasty all right guys let me bring you back very shortly I hate saying that bring you back I'm really sorry about that I'll try not to keep saying it, but I don't, I'm not, um, I'm not a lover of that, I've got to admit. So I always keep some wipes really handy when you're doing this, because it's, um, oh look at that, I need to get that, let's put that on there. Because, um, obviously for hygiene, and um, you know, your hands get, you're handling raw meat, so you need to make sure that, oh, there we go, right in there like that. So, so that's the thing. I'll tighten those up in, in a bit. Um, and, and we'll get it on and start to cook very shortly. Okay, we just put that on. Um, hopefully you can see that. Okay. I've divided the ashes out a little bit. I'll move them out again in a little bit. But um, I, I just want to get it on really so you can start seeing it being cooked, which is the main thing. And just adjusting these legs so I can put it down. Sorry about that. A lot of movement.
can see that. Already those delicious bits are already starting to, to drip. So I'm just going to move that across that way a little bit. Just more over the direct, indirect heat. There we go. But that's it. So it's all on, it's cooking. I've got some, um, I'll show you that. We've got some um, uh, juices left over, which I'll marinate it with a little bit later. But it starts to, once it's going round, because the juices come out a bit naturally, um, out of a, a joint, it, it sort of bastes itself as it goes round. That flap of meat there is really bugging me, so I'm going to adjust that now. So this is the um, Arctic cabin. This is the uh, the 10 square meter one. Um, we put some um, lights in. You can get those and we, we just have them attached uh, to an outside um, socket. We have a lot of fairy lights and stuff, factory and stuff. Um, but yeah, so this is the 10 metre one. Um, I tend to use when I'm cooking like this, I'm using a charcoal and um, a good quality charcoal, not one that spits all the time. So let me show you this. I'm just using some of the stock. I'll put some red wine in there now. Um, that sits over that centre section. I want to get a good crispy um, outer layer on that um, beef, and then I'll put that pan back onto that there, which is um, which is brilliant because it just catches all the rest of the juices, and then that will will just I can use that to marinade um, that. I'll bring you. Um, I'll, oh, that's going, look at that, if you can smell it, it smells absolutely delicious. It really does. I want to marinate that a little bit now. I can find my other glove here. Right, let's take that off. Let's move that away for a minute. Okay. Hope you can see that. It smells absolutely gorgeous. It really does. I'm just gonna leave that off there for a little bit. That's why I'm a little bit red. Um, I just wanted to say that um, you know there's some great people out there YouTubing at the minute, and there's some people. I know we're in lockdown, but there are some people that um, uh, that are doing some great things and it's keeping certainly keeping me entertained you know I'm really enjoying um, the outdoor cooking the the wild camping film um, uh, vlogs and, um, and stuff like that outdoor cooking for me is just absolutely brilliant you know whether it's in a barbecue hut or whether it's actually out in the field or or you know when we go away camping or, or whatever but it's it's a, a, a completely different way of cooking it's um you know you can use um, as many or as little ingredients as you want it's very very um, easy to do anybody can do it put some coals onto a fire put the steak straight onto the coals and cook it you know um, uh, what five minutes on each side and you've got yourself a cooked steak you know you don't have to be anything special to do it, you just you've just got to try. I learnt in the area from when Jamie Oliver was doing this stuff, and now they've all got outside kitchens. They're all cooking outside. Uh, we're really blessed. We've got a, a barbecue hut, as you can see. Um, there's the barbecue. There, it's going well. It's an Arctic cabin barbecue hut, 
and um, you know it's absolutely fantastic we come out here my girls come out here uh, we're out in it an awful lot and we use it an awful lot uh, we socialize in it it does get very warm but I've got the coals up um, quite high at the moment because it's it's um, I'm cooking on an indirect heat so they're high either side of the meat um, directly below the meat there there's there's no coals at all so it's cooking from either side it's kind of like you know how you go to a Turkish restaurant and they cook from the side it's kind of like that um, the idea of the rotisserie is just brilliant because um, you can cook the meat you can put it on and just leave it and let it cook uh, I've made this one. Um, you can buy them. Arctic cabins sell them, um, and they're brilliant. I just couldn't at the time couldn't afford one, uh, so I've done my own. Uh, let me show you. So there's the actual motor on that side there, and it's on a bracket comes across. And what I've done there is um, I don't know if you can see that. Let's show you that side. You might be able to see it a little bit better. Hopefully, yeah. Um, where are we? Just there. And that's the that's what I've made. It, it sits on either side. It's nice and safe. I've tried it. I've tried to um, you know uh, without any coals in. I've tried to knock it, and it, it's it's really safe. It doesn't fall over. It just cooks the meat. I have a stand in the middle that I use. I put that on because I can put that pan there, which has got all of the juices from the meat. I can put that onto that, and we can use that to make the sauce or a gravy. Um, but it's great. So I just wanted to to actually show you. I just wanted to say, really, you know, things are really difficult. Things are time um, are tough at the moment for everyone. But let's keep safe, guys. And and the main thing is, you know, it, it's about love. If you don't show love to someone, they're not going to show it back. So we can make this place so much better. When we come out of lockout, you know, there are people that are doing and have done some extraordinary things and they will keep on doing them. You know, it's in their heart and, um, and I think there's been a big change in this country. This country is, is Great Britain and, um, you know, I've certainly learned an awful lot about myself, about my family. Being locked down for this long has been a real challenging time. But, you know, it's, it's something that we have to get on with. We have to get on and do it. Okay. Right, the next time um, I uh, start to show you the food, not this time, but the next time, um, what we'll do is um, it will be on the last bit when I, when I come in to take it off. So I'm going to leave it now, just let it cook for the, for the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes. So yeah, so just a little bit of um, uh, crispiness on just on the outside, just to finish it off. It's cooked. Um, I cook it under so that uh, it's going to continue cooking for uh, another 10 minutes or so um, once I take it off. So I like to um, get it off undercooked and just finish it off in that last few minutes um, by itself with its own natural juices. As, as it, it um, sucks the juices back into itself and relaxes the meat a little bit, it becomes nice and tender. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this. Um, I'm trying not to make it too long. I'll cut out some of the uh, content. I know I do go on a little bit, but I hope you've enjoyed it.